Award-winning visual artist Reno De La Cruz paints every single day. An old-timer in the art scene, like clockwork, he shows up at his studio upstairs from his home as soon as he wakes up, and while making his morning coffee, he is already mixing paints. He is at the stage of his career where he can paint his heart's desire and often expresses an opinion or two in the pieces he constantly churns out. Mind you, there is no same De La Cruz painting. All are different, opinionated, and a visual feast. His current exhibition, Realize, 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 gathered during the pandemic, may be his most political showing ever. Not leaving any stone unturned, these were his realizations. A play for words he has always been fond of. These are what he saw, these are the bare truths, and these are his lamentations. In Deadly Innocence, De La Cruz speaks of how children had been lavishly corrupted and lured by information age through the web that they have turned into two-headed monsters that speak even wiser than their elders. De La Cruz has raised the alarm of peril as he morphs the child into a lion resulting in a ferocious beast. Notice how De La Cruz synchronized the faces in one unified image, armed with bipolar meaning. Eyes on Prize lends credence to how many bright people end up as false prophets, leading to the wrong cause. Even De La Cruz himself is torn by the decisions he makes. Evident to that is contrary showing De La Cruz undergoing conflicts that he needs to distance himself for discernment. In the end, one must always aim at the greater good. De La Cruz is a deep man of faith, and aided with biblical connotations is the Septum Forest, a poetic parable against the presence of evil that we are sometimes enticed by a beautiful face in its negative disguise. We immediately give in to temptation and resort to sinning. Thorns have a reference again to the Bible of which De La Cruz is well versed. Represented by the fish, thorns signify burden as we are manipulated by how the power controls our lives only to end up being wasted themselves. De La Cruz starts with a beautiful image as a subject. He then researches the images and composes them around it, all related to the general theme or sentiment in mind. He then adds a signature lush foliage that would eventually complement the picture. Often he adds a fictitious element like a fire dragon, which is a remnant of a bygone time he was doing henna tattoo by the beaches of Boracay during the late 90s. As soon as the paint has dried up and subsided, he slits his canvases using a cutter and a ruler. This is a final act of redemption to know he is done. Only De La Cruz does the supreme sacrifice, which only shows his belief that nothing is sacred or permanent, that even the most beautiful images can perish, might as well do the sacrificial lamb. In a way, this is the death of the artist, and De La Cruz is fine with this mortality. In this ongoing pandemic, one cannot feel a sense of fleeting moments of uselessness and morose prevalence of going through the motions. One feels to be slowly losing it as if time is slipping away, as seen in drifting. As two opposing demarcations face the challenge of just letting go, De La Cruz is a master of illustrated animation. He conveys fluidity as he makes surrender look like ecstasy. Silent moaning refers to those who remain defiant against the odds. Again, a reference to De La Cruz who uses art to get back at his detractors. It is hope to realize, realize, realize. De La Cruz reminds viewers we should think before we act on what is right, not only for our children, but simply fellow humans.